Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Vijay Sarda, retired associate professor, Zakir Hussain College, Delhi University. I welcome you to the program of chemistry at senior secondary level. Today we will discuss lesson 8, colloids from module 3. This is part 3 of series of programs. During this program, we will learn about uh, preparation, purification of colloids and properties of colloids. So, what are the objectives of uh, today's program? After watching this program, you should be able to describe the methods of preparation of colloids. You should be able to explain the need and methods used for purification of colloids and also list some important properties of colloids like Brownian motion, Tyndall effect and electrical properties. So, let us start with the preparation of colloids. As we learned in the last program that we can classify colloids into two categories lyophilic colloids and lyophobic colloids and uh, this classification is on the basis of the interaction between the two phases dispersion medium and dispersed phase. First take the lyophilic salts, how are they prepared? And we know that there is great affinity between the two phases. So, therefore, they can be prepared by simply mixing the dispersed phase with the dispersion medium. So, for example, we can prepare soles of starch, gelatin, gum in water. Uh, just put the gum in water, leave it for some time, maybe you can stir it or heat it, then uh, colloidal sole is formed. And sole is a type of colloid in which dispersion medium is solid and the dis, uh, dispersed phase is solid and dispersion medium is liquid. Sole is a type of colloid in which dispersed phase is solid, dispersion medium is liquid. We can also prepare uh, such soles in alcohols. For example, we can prepare sole of uh, cellulose nitrate in alcohol. This particular sole is called collodion. It has very special place in the colloids because it is used for preparing ultra filter paper. And we learnt earlier in the previous program that ultra filtration is the process used for separation of the particles in the colloidal systems. This collodion reduces the pore size of ordinary filter paper which can be used for separation of two phases. Lyophobic uh, soles are difficult to prepare. So, here we use two general types of methods. One is physical methods, second chemical method. In physical method, no chemical change is uh, uh, taking place. In chemical methods, we make use of chemical reactions for preparation of lyophobic salts. First take physical methods. Uh, one very common physical method for preparation of salts of metals is Braddock's arc method and uh, it is used to prepare the salts of gold, silver, platinum, etcetera. You can see the apparatus used, there is a uh, outer tank containing uh, ice, inner tank containing water and some electrolyte like potassium uh, hydroxide and then two rods of the metal whose colloidal uh, sole we want to prepare, they are taken and they are joined to very high potential source. The potential is so high that arc is struck between two metal rods. The temperature of arc is so high that metal of the metal road uh, vaporizes and these vapors get condensed in the water and they form the sole. The role of potassium hydroxide is to stabilize the sole. Ice is required because lot of heat is generated. If we do not uh, cool the system continuously, water will evaporate soon. Then another physical method is peptization. Peptization is conversion of freshly prepared precipitate into colloidal form by addition of a suitable electrolyte. This electrolyte is called peptizing agent. Example, we can add ferric chloride to ferric hydroxide precipitate. Ferric hydroxide precipitate is freshly prepared to this if we add ferric chloride, the ferric ions are preferentially adsorbed on the surface of ferric hydroxide. The ferric hydroxide particles, they acquire positive charge and they start repelling each other. 
thus they form a colloidal soul and they are not able to come together and form the bigger particles. Then uh, chemical methods we make use of chemical reactions of different types. For example, we may use an oxidation reaction for the preparation of sulfur sole. We can oxidize hydrogen sulfide gas by oxidizing agents like uh, bromine water or nitric acid. You can see the reactions Br2 plus H2S gives S plus 2 HBr, 2 HNO3 plus H2S gives S plus 2 H2O plus 2 NO2. This sulfur which is prepared by the oxidation of hydrogen sulfide it is obtained in the colloidal form. We can make use of other chemical reactions like double decomposition. One example of double decomposition is for preparation of arsenious sulfide sole, which is prepared by reaction of H2S gas with arsenious oxide. And after double decomposition, arsenious sulfide and water are formed. The arsenious sulfide which is formed is obtained in the colloidal state. We can use hydrolysis also. For example, uh, ferric hydroxide sole can be prepared by hydrolysis of freshly precipitated ferric chloride. If we take ferric chloride and uh, add water to this, then it gives the precipitate of ferric hydroxide and HCl is generated. So, these are the chemical methods which are used for preparation of lyophobic soles or colloids. Now, these soles which are obtained specially lyophobic using chemical reactions even by physical methods they need purification. Why do they need uh, purification? Because during the uh, method of uh, uh, preparation the impurities are also generated. These impurities are generally electrolytes in nature and they will uh, destabilize the colloid form hence they need to be removed. The two methods used for purification of colloids are dialysis and electrodialysis. So, let us learn about these two methods. In dialysis you can see that colloidal solution is taken in a container whose walls are made of uh, dialyzing membrane. Dialyzing membrane can be any membrane through which solvent that is dispersion medium can pass, but not the dispersed phase. So, it can be the animal membrane or cellophane paper or parchment paper which can be used. It is immersed in a tank of water, water in the tank is continuously changed, uh, fresh water comes from uh, near the bottom and the water in which electrolytes have come out that goes out near the top. So, after some time the electrolyte will be flushed by the water, but process of dialysis is extremely slow. To make it fast we make use of electrodialysis, basic apparatus is the same, setup is the same, only thing is now on the two sides of the uh, sole to be purified two electrodes are placed cathode and anode and electric field is applied. Now, we have seen that uh, in case of lyophobic colloids, the colloids they adsorb some ions from the solution preferentially and it is presence of these ions the charge because of these ions that stabilizes them. Now, in this case the electrodes they act as the attracting and repelling uh, electrodes depending upon the charge the colloidal particles they will start moving towards the oppositely charged electrode. The electrolyte they cannot come out of the membrane but the electrolyte present in the system it will come out and the colloid will be purified. Now, properties of colloids we will learn about some important properties of colloids. Uh, first is that they are heterogeneous in nature. It is a heterogeneous mixture of two phases as we have learnt earlier the dispersed phase and dispersion medium. The second important property is Brownian motion. Brownian motion is zigzag movement of colloidal particles in continuous and random manner. Here the motion of one colloidal particle has been shown in the diagram. Uh, what is the origin of this motion? Colloidal particles are continuously hit by the 
molecules of the dispersion medium. But the number of molecules uh, of uh, medium hitting the colloidal particle is not equal in all the sides because of imbalanced forces a net force acts on the colloidal particle which makes it move in particular direction. But shortly afterwards the position changes now new set of molecules are striking the colloidal particle now the net force may be directed in another direction. So, direction of motion of particle changes. So, this happens continuously it results in a zigzag continuous motion. Second important property of colloidal systems is Tyndall effect. If a strong beam of light is passed through colloidal solution then path of light is illuminated. The phenomena is due to scattering of light by colloidal particles and you can see that Tyndall effect is observed in nature also beautifully in forest we can see the sunlight uh, beam of sun uh, sunlight uh, coming through the trees and basically the beam is visible because of scattering of light by the colloidal dust particles present in the air. We can see the phenomena of Tyndall effect uh, in studio also here I have a small setup and uh, I have two beakers one beaker contains a true solution solution of ink the second beaker contains a colloidal system which is milk put in water. Now, if I try to pass a laser beam through this you can see that beam is visible in this beaker which contains a colloid, but it is not visible in the true solution. So, this path of beam which can be seen here is because of scattering of light by the heterogeneous dispersed phase present in this beaker. Now, third important property of uh, colloids is the electrical properties it is because of presence of some adsorbed ions on the surface of the colloid and main thing is that colloidal particles are electrically charged and all the particles carry same type of charge all of them will carry either negative charge or positive charge. Uh, the dispersion medium carries equal amount of opposite charge. So, that overall system is electrically neutral and examples uh, examples of negatively charged souls are senius sulphide soul, gold soul, silver soul etcetera. In this case all the particles of arsenious sulphide or gold or silver they carry negative charge. Examples of positively charged souls ferric hydroxide soul aluminum hydroxide soul etcetera. Now, how does charge help in stabilization of lyophobic colloids? On the surface of colloidal particle a layer of charged particles is formed. This layer of charged particles remains there because of adsorption opposite charge you can see for example, here the positive charge is present on the surface of the colloidal particle shown and negative charge is present in the dispersion medium. Now, all the particles in this system will carry positive charge and positive positive charges will repel and the particles will not be able to come together and form a bigger particle. That means, these charges keep these particles away from each other and they help in stab uh, stabilization of this colloidal system. What is the origin of charge on colloidal particles? The charge can be obtained by the colloidal particle by preferential adsorption as we have seen in case of ferric hydroxide and ferric chloride system. Ferric hydroxide precipitate on the surface of this precipitate uh, ferric ions are preferentially adsorbed. So, there is preferential adsorption of cation or anions by the colloidal particles that results in charge on the colloidal particle. Missiles associated colloids they carry charge on them because of dissociation. We have seen that uh, soap molecules they dissociate and anions the colloidal particle is uh, made by the anions missiles are formed by the anions and it is because of the dissociation. And lastly during formation of colloids especially by Bredig's arc method colloidal particles capture electrons and get charged. The existence of charge on a colloidal particle we can see with the help of a property which we call electrophoresis. In electrophoresis 
we take a colloid in a U tube and fix two electrodes at the two limbs of the U tube and apply electric field. Under the influence of electric field, the colloidal particles will start moving towards the oppositely charged electrode. In this case, the colloidal particles have the uh, one uh, charge which is uh, negative in nature and they are moving towards positively charged electrode. And we can uh, see the movement of colloidal particles by change in the appearance of the solution and we can actually see that colloidal particles are moving. So, this process is called electrophoresis and this shows the presence of charges on the surface of colloidal particles. Dear learners, uh, let us summarize what we have learnt today. One that colloids can be prepared by physical methods like peptidization and Braddock's arc method. Number two, chemical methods can also be used like uh, oxidation, double decomposition, hydrolysis, uh, hydrolysis reactions, they can be used for preparation of colloids. Then colloids so prepared contain impurities which are electrolytic in nature and they need to be purified. The purification of colloids is done by dialysis and electrodialysis. Then we also learned some important properties of colloids like heterogeneous character, Brownian motion, Tyndall effect and electrical nature. So, these are the important properties of colloids. Next time in the next program, we will learn about the opposite process. Here we learned preparation of colloids, there we will learn how to break the colloids into uh, two components. The process is called coagulation or flocculation. So, we will learn about coagulation and flocculation and applications of colloids in the next program. Thank you.